Good morning, good morning. Come, come, now is the time to worship. Welcome uh, to our <laughs> virtual worship celebration. It is Sunday, the uh, 16th day uh, of August uh, 2020. And so we thank you very much, Karen. That's an awesome way uh, to begin our worship celebration to invite the folk to come and to worship. So we thank Amen. you all very much uh, for being here uh, with us today. Uh, we all always invite your, your, your comments. Uh, we, we love to hear what you're thinking uh, and we love to see your virtual amens as I like to call them. Uh, they come in a thumbs up or a heart shape. Whatever it is, let us know that, that you're out there. So listen. I am excited about our special guest preacher today. Now, you know who it is, uh, but uh, the, the folk who are watching today don't. <laughs> and, 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 and at least I hope you know uh, who it is. There he is right there. It's none other than Ron Sevier. He is the husband. Uh, I, is it the better half of... Uh, well, I, listen. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to start now. any. I, I don't want to start <laughs> any any uh. trouble. But 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 Ron is uh, with us today. Uh, some of our church family are familiar with you, Ron. They've certainly heard about you uh, from your from your wife. But uh, you you've got a great word for us today. I'm looking forward to it. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, I was uh, asking uh, your, uh, I, I actually was asking you, uh, and, and your wife was eavesdropping on the uh, conversation uh, <laughs> uh, about, uh, you know, some of the things that you like to do, uh, and riding motorcycles is one of them, but the, the new thing I heard is that you collect Star Wars paraphernalia. <laughs> what, what, what is that all about? Well, I'm a big fan of Star Wars, and I like, you know, I've always been a, a fan of science fiction. So I collect science fiction as a whole in videos, uh, different uh, collectible figures, things of that, that nature. And well, that's something I've done for years. I guess we all have a little child in all of us, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So listen, we're looking forward uh, to your preached word a little bit later. Uh, but a as always, we begin our, our worship uh, celebrations with, with prayer. And I want to say, if I could just take a little privilege here and say that... Um, it's been a week of a morning for me and uh, my uh, family. Last, uh, last weekend, I got news that one of my first cousins uh, had passed away of a heart attack. And then just a few days later, uh, some of you, many of you have been praying for my aunt, Marietta Pendleton. Uh, she went to be with the Lord. She uh, suffered uh, as a result of COVID-19. So if you would, please be in prayer uh, for the Pendleton family and for the uh, Irvin family. Uh, both there in uh, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. So let us all come together now and position ourselves to, uh, to pray. Uh, the, the psalmist wrote that uh, I will exalt you, my God and King, and I will praise your name forever and ever. He goes on to say, I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. So Lord, we come together today to praise your name to lift your name above the heavens. It is in the name of Jesus that we bow before you as one church united by faith to seek your face and your power in prayer. 
The Bible tells us that the Word of God is living, it's active, it's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It is uh, this time, Lord, that we come to you in this time of trouble, in this time of confusion, in this time of chaos and sickness and disease and racial tension and inequality and injustice and political games. Uh, we come, Lord, we ask you to bring your word to life in the hearts and in the minds of all people so that our actions reflect your will. You said that we are to hate evil and to love good and to establish justice in the gate. Let us uh, not just speak out about what is not just and fair in our world, but let us act out to make change happen in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for being merciful and gracious. We thank you for your loving kindness toward us. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to watch over our congregation. Lord, I thank you for continuing to show yourself strong when we are weak. Thank you, Lord, for uh, our members who have quit smoking. We thank you, Lord, for our members who are cancer-free. We thank you for our members who have uh, battled COVID-19 and recovered. We thank you for members who have grown stronger in their relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for our members who, uh, who, who didn't think they had enough but have yet to want for anything. Lord, hear our prayer for the leaders of our nation, of our state, our county, and our city. Direct their vision so that they see you. Open their hearts so they receive you. And open their ears so that they hear from you and you alone. We cast down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Lord, hear our prayer for our students and our teachers who are either already back in school or they're headed back soon. We pray that our children will continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray that you will watch over them day and night and give them a hunger to excel, whether it's in a physical classroom or a virtual environment at their home. Give our parents and teachers patience. Give them peace and give them provision in the name of Jesus. Lord, as always, forgive us for any sins we've committed by thought, word, or deed, anything that's been contrary to your will and to your ways. We ask you, Lord, to lead us not into temptation. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. You are the Lord who always keeps his promises and are gracious in all that you do. And so, Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer today in the matchless, marvelous, magnificent name of Jesus Christ, that all who agree say amen. Amen and amen. amen. Well, it's time now for more praise and worship. If you would, Karen, please lead the way. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your presence. And just as your presence was with the children of Israel, we thank you that your all-encompassing presence is with us. Your presence 
to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. And we are standing on hold. church say amen that is a powerful uh, a powerful medley actually uh, and and a powerful statement there at at, at the end God is already here amen. he's already here sometimes we watch and we're waiting for him to show up and in, in fact he's always been here yeah uh, and so to simply call on him call on the name of Jesus thank you very much for that Karen amen We'll bring Ron back in here, and as again, I, I introduced him earlier. He is uh, a Karen's husband, uh, a great husband. He is a, a man of God. A man of God. Uh, he knows the Word of God. Uh, he trusts the Word of God. He's always willing to share the Word of God, and I believe he has a word from God for us today. So, uh, Brother Sevier. Uh, in uh, Ashford, give a, a, a warm welcome as I uh, hand over our virtual pulpit to Ron Sivier. Good morning. Uh, thank you again for allowing me to have this opportunity. Thank you, Pastor Irv, for allowing me to have this opportunity to bring the word today. And uh, I just thank God for it. Uh, we're going to be talking about Red Sea Rule number seven. And it's interesting that this is a book in which I've been tasked to uh, give a message from. Um, it was a book that was given to me by my mother-in-law a while ago when I was in a very low place, a uh, place in which I didn't know where God was leading me or what he was doing with me at that particular time. I was um, not preaching, and I was a, a, a preacher, and he had put me on a shift in which there was no way possible that I could be in church and do the things that I needed to do. So that was something that impacted my life. Today, we're going to be talking about Red Sea Rule number seven, and it's envisioning God's enveloping presence. 
And a lot of times with things that go on in our lives, with the things that distract us, um, we have a hard time envisioning God's presence, knowing that he's with us. Uh, we're going to be looking at Exodus 14, 19, and 20, and John 20, 11 through 17. Now, it may seem on the surface that these two have nothing to do with each other, but actually they have quite similar stories that uh, impact us as far as our journey and envisioning God's presence and envisioning his enveloping presence. And the thing that we need to do, especially in times like these where there is uh, racial unrest, there's uh, political unrest, there's social unrest, you have also uh, this disease that is pursuing us, uh, we need to be able to envision God's presence even in the midst of all of this. So we're going to be looking at these particular verses in uh, Exodus 14, 19 through 20. It says, the angel of God who has been going before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. And there was a cloud along with the darkness, yet it gave light at night. Thus, one did not come near the other all night. And it's talking about the two particular camps. And now we're going to uh, go along to uh, John chapter 20, verses 11 through 20. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. So as she wept, she stood stooped and looked into the land, to the tomb, I'm sorry, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus was, had been lying. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. In these two instances, you have two different encounters with God. Now, in the Old Testament, with this cloud that was uh, inhabited by, the, they say, the angel of God, whenever you see those terms in, in capital letters, generally it indicates what they call a theophany or a Christophany, which is, in this case, a, a physical presence of God or a physical physical presence of Jesus Christ, even in the Old Testament. Uh, what's interesting here is both cases, you were dealing with people who had very limited experience with God. They were just starting out in their journey with their experience with God. You see Mary, who didn't come into the picture till later on into the ministry of Jesus Christ. And so their opportunity to know him, to, to the opportunity to know his character, the opportunity to know the ins and out of the relationship with him at that time was very limited. In the, in the case of the Old Testament verse, when we're dealing with the people of Israel, he moved from being a shepherd to being a shield. And they needed to know the fact that his movement was not abandoning them. It was just shifting in his uh, ability to take care of them at that particular time. He had been leading them through the desert and providing for them through that leadership through the desert. Now they're at a crossroads. You have the Egyptian army behind them and you have the Red Sea in front of them. And they're stuck in the middle. And because of their limited experience with God, they then began to be afraid. The next thing they said was, which I find pretty interesting was, were there not enough graves in Egypt that you had to bring us out here to die? 
uh, interesting question. And sometimes we're faced with that question ourselves when, when trouble comes and we can't envision God's presence when we are having trouble seeing God's presence due to fear, due, due to a particular enemy that we see that seems to be overwhelming, in this case, the Egyptian army, which they were a formidable army. They were the top army at the particular time in history. So they see these chariots, they see these people, and they see the pursuit, and they remember the slavery that they had before uh, with the Egyptians. And they're wondering what's going to happen. So this cloud moves behind them. And before, it was shepherding them. Now, it's protecting them. And in the case of the Israelites, now they have to see the enemy in two lights. Is this an opportunity for the enemy to take me or for the Lord to give us an opportunity? And a lot of times when we're dealing with the problems of life and the daily activities of life, we have trouble focusing on the character of God. And, and with them, because of their limited experience, they could not focus on the character of God. With us, sometimes because of our limited experience, not only with God in, as a whole, sometimes in certain areas. I remember one thing for me that was a big problem with uh, envisioning God's presence with people. I believe God could move stuff anytime. People, I thought was a harder problem. I thought God, because of their free will and their, because of their uh, character and because of the nature in which God created them to be able to make a choice, it was harder for him to move people. I later found out it was just as easy for him to move people as it was for him to move the earth. Uh, the next thing that we need to look at is, are we gonna concentrate on the enemy behind us or the opportunity before us? When they reached the Red Sea, this was an, a legitimate obstacle. They also had a legitimate enemy. So to reach the, that, that particular point and to be sandwiched in between an army <laughs> and a sea, you can see their difficulty and see and seeing their opportunity here. But what God had done previously in the plagues that he had brought on Egypt, when he brought manna from heaven to feed them, when he brought uh, the quail to feed them, this cloud that gave light at night, all these things should have been an indication that this was not a problem, but an opportunity. And for us, when we are conceptualizing our situation, when God is working or moving, sometimes we don't see uh, God moving behind us because we're too busy looking in, in front of us. Um, the next thing we need to look at is the pain that blurs vision. Pain, a lot of times, keeps us from seeing the things we need to see. For people who are in pain, and, and like my wife can tell you, when her knee pain is really bad, it affects her attitude, it affects her mood, it affects her circumstances. And with us, when we're dealing with different things, such as right now, we're dealing with COVID, we're dealing with the problems that we have, many people are losing jobs and they're worried about feeding their families from week to week. These are things that can blur our vision as far as seeing the activity and the power of God. Uh, one of the things that gets in the way when we're looking at the pain and, and what happens with that pain is we are sometimes conceptualizing God in the wrong way. And I'll give you an example of something that used to happen to me when I was a, when I was a kid. Everybody has a grandmother that they believe is the best cook in the world. And I'm no exception to that. My grandmother was, the, to me, the best cook in the world. And she used to make this pie. And, then it, and she told me it was a lemon meringue pie. So every lemon meringue pie 
I had after that was judged by how her pie tasted. So I would have lemon meringue at different places and I never was satisfied with the lemon meringue pie that I had. I would go to restaurants, I would go to other people's house and I was like, this does not taste like my grandmother's pie. I happened to go to a Christmas party and a lady brought, a, uh, let's say a banana pudding and the banana pudding had a filling and I tasted the filling and I said, wait, what is that filling? And she said, that's a lemon cream cheese filling. That tastes exactly like my grandmother's pie. The whole time I thought I was eating lemon meringue, I had been eating lemon cream cheese pie. And I was judging everybody's standard of lemon meringue based on eating the wrong pie. Sometimes when it comes to judging God in different circumstances, we look at the situation as seeing God uh, as being insufficient because we have looked at him from the wrong way, judging him by the wrong circumstances, judging him by a character that's not his character. God is not a cosmic genie. He does not give three wishes and everything goes out the way we expect it to go. So in the case of Mary, Mary, who had been freed from seven demons who had seen a type of love she had never seen in her life. And now all of a sudden this is taken away from her. So she makes a trip to the tomb and actually this is her second trip to the tomb and she doesn't see Jesus, the God that comforted her. But she doesn't truly understand based on her experience what Jesus and who Jesus is. So she's there weeping. And she looks into the tomb. She sees the two angels. And the angels ask her, woman, why are you weeping? And then she has the encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, woman, why are you weeping? Now, she gave a good reason. The reason was she didn't know where her master's body was. Which brings us to the next point. Are we looking for a dead man or a risen savior? So in this envisioning God's presence, and when I talk about his enveloping presence, we're talking about his all-encompassing, uh, cloaking us, uh, covering us completely, presence. And sometimes we don't feel it. And that's where we get into trouble because we trust like I said, I was a big Star Wars fan. It's not Luke Skywalker. So you don't trust your feelings. A lot of times God is moving and he's working on our behalf and we don't see it and we don't feel it. In the Old Testament, because of their lack of experience, they had to see a lot of things. And God put a lot of things out there for them to see to build their relationship with him. But we have the benefit of the word of God. We have the benefit of the saints that were before us. We have the benefit of our family members who may have or may have not known God. And we had the opportunity to see these things that change our perception of God. And that brings me to another point. If you don't truly have an experience with God, it's hard to envision his presence. You can't envision what you've never experienced. I cannot envision having, let's say, uh, asparagus, because I've never had it. I can't envision uh, eating beetles because I've never eaten beetles before. But in a so certain part of the world, those are things that people eat. People eat asparagus here in the United States. These are things that blur our vision if we don't watch out. Pain of hurt, pain of loss, the pain of different circumstances that come up in our life. As a result of the things that we see, sometimes our vision is blurred and we have to allow God to be present and know he is present even in the worst of circumstances.
uh, as he was in the story of uh, Three Boys in the Fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You had them say that there was one that looked like the Son of Man in the midst of them. They had a vision of that as they were going through the fire. They had a vision of who God was and who their his character was as they were going through that. Uh, Daniel knew God's character so much that even when he was thrown into the lion's den, he knew that God's presence was there and that if he chose to save him, he could. For us and for our future and for our present, we need to be able to, no matter what the circumstance, envision God's presence because it will change not only our belief, it'll change our behavior, it'll change our mood, it'll change our activity, it'll change our focus and what we need in envisioning uh, the developing presence of God is changing our focus, not focusing on our problems, because sometimes we do focus too much on our problems and our problems can be very real. real. That's not to be in denial that they exist. The Egyptians existed. Jesus' body was missing. But what we don't focus on is what God has the ability to do and what Jesus had the ability to do right then and there, which was be present when he said he was going to be present. He told them beforehand that in three days he would raise this temple, which was his body. So we can be confident in the fact that God is present even in the worst circumstances, even when we don't actually see him. The scripture says, that we walk by faith and not by sight. It also says that uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And when we talk about things hoped for, we're not talking about things wished for. We're talking about things that are actually there, that we have evidence from God's character and God's person and God's dealing with us that they are there. So. As I close this message, we need to take this time to know that we have a risen Savior, and we need to know that God acted the same way in the Old Testament as he did in the New. He moved from shepherding Mary, shepherding the people of Israel, to being their protector by giving his blood on, on Calvary. Uh, he had to protect us from a greater enemy in Satan, a greater enemy in sin, a greater enemy in death, a greater enemy in destruction. And now we have an opportunity to cross over into the kingdom of God as they had the opportunity to cross over into the kingdom God had presented for them as far as his people in the, in, in the, the land of Israel. Um, I invite you today, if you are a person that's struggling right now with your vision of God, with your, I would say, with your doubts about his character and his but doubts about the fact that he is with you, the doubts about things that you believe that because it's you, God won't do it. And God has shown himself to be true, whether Old Testament, New Testament, whether now, whether later, that he's going to be the same character today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He is that guy. He's the one that has brought you to this point to understand that God has put you in this time at this particular area is not by accident. It's not circumstances. We need to shine so that his character can show through us and others can see what we can, we can see and they can see what they cannot see, which is the character of God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you thanking you and praising you for your word. We thank you for this time. 
And I thank you again for this opportunity. Lord, I hope that someone out there that was in pain, that was thinking God had abandoned them, thinking that God would not protect them or give them another opportunity, especially in the times that we live in, that you would show them that you are truly a God that's a shield and a shepherd. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word. And I just come thanking you again for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who did not know that we serve a risen Savior who has the character that can provide for us, protect us, shield us, envelop us, give us the strength that we need, give us the comfort that we need. He sent his comfort, comforter in the Holy Spirit. I invite you to come today and know Christ. And if you maybe been on the fence for a while and you abandoned what your teachings are, I invite you to also come and reestablish that relationship with him. Uh, thank you. And that's all I have. All right. Well, listen, let the church say uh, amen. Thank you very much for that, Ron. You know, that that's an important message uh, for for us today. Uh, you know, you said a lot of important things, but but the thing that really caught me the most was this uh, notion of the choice we have during this time. And that is that we can uh, focus on uh, the enemy that's chasing us or we can look at the opportunity in front of us. And with Jesus, the opportunities are, are endless because with uh, men and women, uh, you, you know, some things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So thank you. Thank you very much for that, for that word. Uh, I want to invite those of you uh, there uh, it, who are listening to the sound of my voice uh, to take this opportunity to respond to the word that has gone forth. Jesus is calling, and the question is always, how are you going to respond um, you know God wants wants to hear from you God wants to uh, hear you say yes and that's all you have to do is say yes you may be unclear about what to do so just say yes say yes Lord I'm a sinner yes I repent of my sins yes uh, I, I want you to forgive me of my sins yes uh, Lord I believe that you are the son of the living God that Jesus Christ your only begotten son came to earth was crucified resurrected for my sins yes Lord I want you to save me yes I want you to come into my life to direct my life just say yes if you say that you'll be saved. And then the rest is really up to you and the days that are ahead of you. So uh, again, thank you very much, Iran, for, for that. What a powerful, powerful a word. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about today's message or about Ashford, I want to encourage you to reach out to us. There's the contact information on the screen, our email and our uh, phone number. I do look forward to hearing from you. Uh, as always, uh, we thank you for your generosity. It is time for our tithes and offerings, time to give back uh, to God. Uh, Ashford, you continue to be very, very generous uh, with your giving, and so we thank you for that. We have a multitude of ways to give. You can give online. You can text to give. Of course, you can also uh, give using our Ashford Auto Draft, and you can share your gifts by mail. That number is on your screen. So again, thank you for your generosity. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given to thee. A reminder that, yes, Virtual Sunday School is alive and well at Ashford. It's uh, later today at 1030 in the morning uh, via Zoom, uh, and uh, we invite you to be, to be a part of that. Again, we continue in the uh, book of Psalms, Psalm 119. Uh, we are, uh, this is session 7, and so we're looking at uh, Psalm 119, verses 121 through 120. 36. Again, Matt Chandler providing the resource, but our own David Booth 
uh, is uh, providing the leadership. And these are some great and encouraging lessons that I encourage you. And it's really more than a lesson, it's a conversation. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's, they're very fruitful. And I encourage you to be a part of our virtual Sunday School. You can also join us for our Power Wednesday a Bible study. Uh, that's over the phone via conference call every Wednesday morning at 930. Diana Fair is uh, leading that uh, discussion, and that is there is the information on your screen that you can participate as well. And our prayer conference call on Tuesdays at 6 uh, and Saturdays at noon, there's the dial-in number. We encourage you to be a part. Prayer is such an important part of what we do, and I want to encourage each and every one of you to participate. Uh, so, uh, Karen, as, as always, uh, thank you so much for your leadership today. I do want to say that uh, one, one of the things that we're working on, and we hope to have some information for you a little bit later, is we're trying to plan a, a prayer walk for our schools. Every year our prayer team organizes a prayer walk, and we uh, you know, walk the, uh, the, the campuses of our area schools. And so we're trying to figure out how we can do that. Uh, not just physically, but virtually as well. So we've got a planning team working through that. And so we'll have a date and a time for you uh, soon. Uh, you know, a lot of folk are asking, when are we going to be back in the sanctuary? I don't have the answer to that question. Really, you have the answer to that question. I encourage your feedback. Uh, email me. Uh, give me a call. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, we're looking for creative ministry ideas uh, in, in, in in this new uh this new normal that we're living in. So uh, if you have some thoughts and ideas about how we can uh, do ministry uh, in this new paradigm, please uh, let us know. Uh, we've been talking about our back to school bash that we would have had by now. Uh, and uh, you know, clearly because of social, social distancing, uh, and this virtual reality, uh, you know, we've got to come up with some creative ways to, to manage that. And so if you have any thoughts and ideas about that, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Karen, do you have any thoughts and ideas? <laughs> well, let's talk about it. I've got some things running around in my head right well, now. Well, you, so. you, you, you've got my <laughs> phone number. Uh, so <laughs> listen, it's, it has been a great day. If you would, as always, why don't you close us out in song? Amen. So I just want to encourage you throughout this week just to not focus on your circumstances. As we heard earlier, focus on who God is. Turn your eyes up on Jesus. Turn your eyes up on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Amen. Well, Ron is back with us. Ron, just want to again say a thank you for a, a fantastic word today. Thank you uh, for uh, your uh, desire and willingness to serve. And so God bless you. So you know uh, by, by now that at the end of every worship service, we ask three questions. I ask three questions and the congregation provides the answers. And so as we prepare to uh, go forward and, and have a great week, I'll ask the question, uh, who is the head of this church? And the response is Jesus. Uh, who is the church? We are. And what are we as the church called to do? We're called to serve. We're called to envision Amen. that God is with us. He's always with us. And it's always good to keep our eye on him yeah. and not the enemy that's chasing us. God bless you. Uh, have a great rest of the week. And we'll see you next Sunday at 9 o'clock.